Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Elvington Airfield and the famous Runway 26. This is the Bike Social Booster Bonanza. Simon, here we are, Elvington. It's, uh, well, it's a bit overcast now, isn't it? It started sunnier earlier on, but uh, tell me, what is the Bike Social Booster Bonanza? It's a celebration of all things Hayabusa um, because it's such a, a cult bike. It has so many fans. It's set so many world records. If there's a world record, a speed world record involving two wheels, it's normally powered by Hayabusa. Um, and so, yeah, we just thought we'd get, with the launch of the Gen 3 bike, a year ago yeah. we thought we'd just get everybody together and say come and ride your bike at Elvington and go as fast as you want it's not often that you get a chance to do that in real life and the the guys who are running the event here today straight liners they're familiar with these kind of events so they've brought their expertise in haven't they they've got their timing equipment and they've provided it well here the two two mile runway yeah and they're doing being timed at half mile and one mile as well and look at us surrounded by them there's, know, there's suzuki hayabusa's of all shapes and sizes of all ages gen 1 gen 2 gen 3. well that's the other thing it's one of the most highly modified bikes people just strap turbos to them they supercharge them there's nitrous long swing arms there's just about everything there's all breeds of of sort of special hayabusa um, making all kinds of power outputs from standard bikes yeah. right up to, I don't know, 300, 350 horsepower plus machines, okay. which is hairy stuff. So there's some real Hayabusa tuning experts here as well. So you've had a standard Gen 3 bike, haven't you, for a year, you've been running that. What, and you've had it on the dyno, what do they make standard? So it's a bit of a complicated story. So one of the big things about the Gen 3 bike was that Suzuki claimed less horsepower and um, slightly less torque, I think, than the Gen 2, the previous model, which caused a bit of an outcry at the time because what's the booster about if it isn't about bigger numbers and being faster and stronger? However, when we put the bike on the dyno, it turns out it actually makes more power than the Gen 2 bike as standard. Um, so we're talking about 182 horsepower um, after about 5,000 miles, so the engine was well bedded in. But that is more than a standard Gen 2 bike. So there's a bit of a strange one there. Suzuki claim less, but it makes more. Right. But hey, who's complaining? It's more horsepower. So yeah, about 182 brake. And so we've got Bike Social customers here, Bike Social members, Bennett's customers. Uh, there's a real mixed bag of equipment and bikes. People have bought them on trailers. People have ridden them here. And what's good is that they, pretty much every single one of them is guaranteed to do over 175, 180 miles an hour, isn't it? It is. It's actually harder to go that fast than it seems. You think you just sit on a bike and open the throttle until it's flat out. Um, but aerodynamics play such a huge part in that. And a lot of riders on their first runs will be sitting there bolt upright, not tucking in enough. And it, actually, it's quite intimidating to do that kind of speed, even on a massive runway like Elvington. I think once people get bedded in, they'll get better at it. But, but it's not that easy. It's a great event and everyone can have as many runs as they want yeah, uh, and it's free of charge for bike social customers so uh, yeah what a perfect perfect opportunity well should we go and have a word with with some of them there's plenty to choose from isn't there it's almost hard to pick someone to talk to but we'll do our best let's start there's no or the feeling of feeling euphoric when you drive so fast. Absolutely fantastic. I would never ever have dreamed that I've been doing what I've done today. The opportunity to ride one of those down the runway was just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. So smooth, the bike. Really smooth. Lovely people here, lovely bikes. Great fun, oh, great day, you should do it again, definitely. Started out at 153, ended up at 174 miles an hour. I just can't stop smiling. <laughs> I think the second run was 170. Fantastic, brilliant, totally enjoyed it. Great day, a little bit windy, but at a nice top speed of what, 187. I'd definitely come back and do it again, 100%. Hello, Becky Ellis. Hi. Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social Booster Bonanza. 
should I introduce you as the fastest lady in the world on two wheels, on a conventional two-wheel motorbike? Yeah, that's that's what I've been given. It's um, it's based on a conventional motorcycle. Yeah. And um, I've got the title of the fastest lady on two wheels and the fastest grandma on two wheels. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. So how fast is that? Um, to two, uh, 264.1 mile an hour. 264.1? Yep. Set in recently or? I actually set it in 2014. Okay. Um, and then got to 263 in 2015. Right, oh, okay. uh, Not on this bike, it was on the original first build that we did. Yeah, still a Hayabusa. Still exactly the same. Same spec. Same spec, yeah, everything, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, and the time since then, you sort of like chasing more and more speed? That's it. I mean, we, we, we've changed a slight um, moderations to the aerodynamics, which is what we're working on at the moment with uh -huh. the university. And um, we're looking at increasing that speed, hopefully. The challenge is 300 mile an hour. Uh, I'd be happy with 270. <laughs> I think and that's in one mile? It is, yeah, it's so, from a standing start. And that record was set here or? It was, yeah. yeah. It's the only place that you can actually do it. Long enough runway to be able to do it. And it's just over two, uh, just under two miles long is the runway. So just quickly, I mean, uh, have you sort of done any top speed stuff on other bikes at all? Or is the Busa is the bike of choice for this kind of job? The Busa is the bike of choice. I like to have the challenge of different bikes and I have um, a Suzuki Bandit as well, which I've, oh, okay. um, I've been riding on here. So, Becky, how did you get into top speed, what do you call it, top speed riding? Top speed yeah, testing? top speed racing, I think, racing, yeah. yeah. I actually started off doing drag racing. Ah, okay. um, so it was quarter mile drag racing. Right. Um, and I, I, I liked it, but I, you had to shut off at the end because it was all timed, you know, you had a certain time that you did it too. And I just felt like I didn't want to. You want to keep going. Yeah. And we bought a busser um, that was from a scrap, scrap yard. And we were going to break it for using it on the drag bike. Yeah. And I said, oh, I've always wanted to have a go on one. Can I have a go? And I did 184 mile an hour and that was it. It was mine. You were hooked. I was hooked and that was 2008. Right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, from there, really, I just progressed, got faster and faster. We tweaked it and did this and the, the jetting and the fueling. and. Yeah. Um, polishing the heads and all sorts of different things and I just couldn't crack 100 and, uh, 200 mile an hour I got yeah. to 199 almost uh, and for Christmas one year he bought me a turbo yeah. so he spent that time over the Christmas period converting the bike and it's just been phenomenal ever since really and so what is it about the idea of going at top speed what does that feel like to do 260 miles an hour you're really focused on what you're doing, so you, and it's over so quickly. Uh, from start to finish, it took me 19 seconds to get from zero to 264. Oh, my life! Um, so, really, it's, it, all I can explain it as, and, and this is how I've told other people, it's like being shot out of a bullet, out of a gun. Yeah. Um, because the, the actual um, initial get going is so intense and the bike hooks up in every gear and as you're going down. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. It's, it's, you're not thinking about anything else other than I'm going straight, the bike's going well, and when you get down there, you think, wow, it's the stopping that you know you've done well because it takes you so long to stop <laughs> and you have to brake hard. Yeah, you're like, so, uh, And I, hadn't, I didn't know I'd done it. So what's the next plan then? What's the next aim? Do you go faster and faster? You say 300 was the... It is. 300 mile an hour is, is the... Is that realistic? Everybody wants to do 300 mile an hour. It has... has not been achieved yet but it is dangerous it is yeah yeah everything on the bike has to be checked every single ride and those that don't are going to find that get into trouble because something's not quite right the chain's not right the tires are not right i mean the road conditions as well you know it's a runway it's a you know it's somebody's been landing airplanes on there you know it's, it's it's all got to be checked it's serious stuff yeah it is serious yeah and the we faster quite, you go yeah. the more serious it is i'd like to get to 270 and see how that goes. It, it was very, very hard getting to 260. And it gets harder, doesn't it, as the aerodynamics have more and more effect at the higher speed. You need more, exponentially more horsepower to absolutely, go a yeah. little bit faster. Yeah. What kind of horsepower are we making here, do we know? We're not quite absolutely sure, but we're, we're looking at about 650. Come again, six? 650. 650 yeah. horsepower. Yeah. That's a so, lot of horsepower. It is. Wow. That must feel incredible to ride. It's, it's, it certainly puts you in your seat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming on, Becky. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for turning up on this creation. Good thank luck. Thank you. So, 
Eddie Hall, world's strongest man, 2017. Yeah. And you've come here today to Elvington to the Bennett's Bike Social Busa Bonanza on a Hayabusa, the world's fastest bike. So that's your personal machine? It is, yeah. Yeah, I've been in a Hayabusa for uh, three, four months now. So a little oh, okay. bit of road use, but no, no track use yet. So what's it like riding it flat out up there then? It's completely different. I mean, on the road, of course, you do open it up in little bits, you know, in little straights. But it, obviously, it, a bike like that, you can't open up 50% of the potential on a, on a road. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, to open up here is uh, it's a hell of an experience, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's not too bad. It's not too windy today. Was the crosswind an issue or? A little bit, you know, you know, obviously being such a big guy, I do feel the wind, especially <laughs> yeah. when it rips you out the handlebars, you feel it causing drag, you feel it causing, you know, pulling you back. But yeah, um, but yeah that, going through that, I call it like the vortex. Star Trek, where they you know go press the button and they go, oh, it's the and it feel, that's how it feels. Yeah, you just feel like you're going through a vortex. It's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and I've got to ask you, how fast did you go? I first run, I hit 159 miles an hour. I yeah. think I can do quite a bit more. Yeah. And you get my head down. I says it lots of wind resistance, so you need to get a lot lower. Yeah. Keep that throttle open and just keep smashing through the gears. So yeah. hopefully, hoping for 170 plus. Which is not bad through a mile from a standing start. Yeah, nice one. Anyway, mate, thank you very much for coming. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Really, Evan. Thank you. Thank cheers. You. Christian, that was your first time on a Hayabusa, am I correct? Yep, first time and uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. What, uh, what, well tell me, how did you enjoy it, why did you enjoy it? I guess just because it's something quite new to me, it's something I've never done before. Um, we have corners, so yeah, going in a straight line was something something different. Um, having such a vast open space is also something quite new to me, you know, obviously on the racetracks. As much as we have a bit of runoff, we don't have a great deal, so um, compared to this it was, uh, yeah, just a bit just a different experience really. Do you have to kind of recompute compute your mind and to because you've got such a wide runway, is it does it get a bit disorienting? I think it does. It's almost harder to get your bearings because everything's so far away. You know, you get a bit of a brief in sort of like shut off at a certain point and then I kinda did, but then you think, where does it even end? You know, like you, you you're sort of not sure even if the runway is just going to come to an abrupt stop at some point because it's everything's so far in the distance that you almost can't see over that horizon so i still have probably about a mile to go so yeah it was all um all very new um but yeah pretty cool 179 is that right is that what you did yeah i was on the uh the standard higher booster and that was all good and um i'm not sure how fast they go completely i felt like uh well, I was flat out, so I don't know how much uh, different we can get out of that, but, uh, you know, it was good fun. And some of these people, some of these bikes here, they're capable of mega speeds. I mean, some of them, are, there's been two on five done today, but this is the kind of environment where there are people who come with specific machinery do 270, 275. I, I, that must be a crazy speed. Of that, you know, you, you, I don't know what the body goes through at those kind of speeds or, or what you're... Do they, do they blink? I don't even know. What, <laughs> is this the kind of thing that you would want to do? Would you want to go 270 miles an hour? I can't imagine me taking this up as a hobby, um, but I can understand that pursuit of, of speed and I can also understand, I mean, uh, whatever I did then, like nearly 180, that's in the realms of what we get to anyway, so it's nothing sort of strange or indifferent, but I can fully imagine that once you start going over 220, 230, whatever, it, go, it becomes a completely different ball game and obviously the consequences are, uh, are quite immense once you start going to a certain point. I mean, the bike I rode, the standard higher booster, at that speed, honestly, was so incredibly stable and such a smooth ride that I felt like I could have had a cup of tea while I was doing it. You know, it felt like I was doing 50 mile an hour rather than anything else. But yeah, I think if uh, once you start going super fast, I think cha things change pretty, pretty rapidly. Brilliant, thank you so much for coming down. Thanks for sharing your input with us. Cheers, thank you. Okay, Ian Bland, Head of Motorcycle Marketing for Suzuki. Correct. It's been a heck of a day, hasn't it? It's been really good. There's, there's a, a lot of love for the Hayabusa and a, a, a real kind of passion for that, that, that brand, that motorcycle. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, how does it sort of, where does it sit in the Suzuki firmament of, of, of brands and how important is it to Suzuki? Hayabusa is a, a really important part of the Suzuki brand. You know, it's almost a brand in itself. Yes, yes. It's, there's nothing quite like it, or as we said when we launched the Generation 3 just over a year ago, nothing comes close, you know. And I think that's the thing, it, it is a kind of inner class 
of its own in a way, you know. Nothing else looks like it. You, you can take a Gen 1, 2 or 3 and if you look at the silhouette, it's the same. It's yeah. Hayabusa, it's iconic. And, you know, it's something special, you know, that those first bikes, the 99 bike before the restrictions, 220 on the clocks, you know, they were clocked at 200 and, you know, it's a legend, you know, and it's, it's come back with the Gen 3 bike, you know, so it's been great, you know, to do this and see customers here with all three generations. Yeah, and there's a real, it's a real club, isn't it? There's a real club atmosphere um, between the people who own the bikes. It's, it's a kind of like a, I was going to say brotherhood, but there's plenty of ladies here as well. It's a real fraternity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, they've got that thing in common, you know, um, but it's it's inclusive. They want others to be part of it as well. So it's quite open. Yeah. But those that are in know what it's about, you know, and if you haven't, if you haven't ridden the Hayabusa, it's one of those bikes that every motorcyclist should, should at least ride once, you know, because it is is such an experience really and people have had the opportunity today because we've had some standard sort of gen 3 bikes that people can just rock up and yeah. sign up and then go out and ride yeah. we've got the new ones here uh, i mean some of the customers are on the gen 3 anyhow but yeah. there's a lot of gen 2 and gen 1 and they're running them and they're comparing them we've had a few people saying hmm okay uh, you know and thinking they're going to put their order down or they've got to get one which is great probably in addition to the one they've already got because that's a classic already yeah but it has evolved as you know yeah, um, yeah yeah and it's just a fun bike to ride you know but you need to be someone like this to really explore that the top end of its performance that was exactly it wasn't and, it just to give people the opportunity yeah. to come here and, and find out what it's like to ride a Hayabusa yeah. at speeds higher than you yeah. can normally do on the road the thing is Hayabusa is is such a capable bike in so many ways you know I mean it's a great as you know it's a great sport touring bike it's, great pillion bike it's just smooth easy fast power and yet some elements of it you you can't do on the road so to give the customers a chance to come and do that here yeah. you know they've really appreciated it. it's so true i talked to a guy earlier who had a who's got a booster a, a, a gen 2 it's making over 200 horsepower normally aspirated it's got loads of trick bits it's got olins on it and it's got it's got all the right parts it's got bar risers and it's even got oxford heated grips you know but it makes over 200 horsepower he comes here and does 185 you know without even thinking about it on the runway but he also tours it to france he tours it to spain he's done hundreds of thousands of miles on this thing just riding it everywhere um that's that's a quite a wide envelope of versatility everyone thinks you know there's there's there's, there's no sort of boosters aren't just about top speed there's no so much more to it no actually most of the time you know especially here in the uk the top speed it's nice to know it's there but it's those other elements of its capabilities and performance which you can appreciate every day you know for me it's just like the effortless thrust that there's always ample thrust there and also the fact the way it kind of irons out the bumps in the road you know it's just like a magic carpet yeah, ride yeah. which you tend to think you need an adventure bike for with our terrible potholed roads but actually a booster being a little bit heavier than a super bike just is so planted and smooth over that you can appreciate that every day throw in the performance and all the electronics now and and you know what's not to like speaking of appreciating it every day i mean this day has been a great sort of day i mean we can do this again next year, can't we? We can come back here and do that again. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Let's just hope we have some more sunshine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's getting a bit chilly Two now. degrees warmer. Yeah, okay, we'll do it in proper summer next yeah. time. Yeah, and Thank I'll you. bring the levers next time. Ah, there you go. Me too. Thank you, Ian, it's been brilliant. Yeah, nice one. Thanks, Simon. That's a wrap. The Booster Bonanza is done for 2022. You never know. We might do uh, another one this year. We might do another one, another manufacturer. You never know. Uh, and that's the beauty, of course, of being a bike social member. There's been plenty of people here who have done this kind of thing before and they're challenging themselves and their bikes to go faster and faster and faster. I think 215 miles per hour is the fastest we've seen here today. But there's also been a load of people who've never done this kind of thing before and who have kind of um, treated themselves to something that's brand new and that they're, they're really they're reveling in or relishing the experience of doing something 
running their bike as fast as they can in a legitimate place like Elvington here. And straight liners have been involved. Of course, they're a you know, professional outfit. They know what they're doing. They've run a great show. Suzuki have been involved as well. Brilliant. Uh, great to have them on board. Part of the essence of being a bike social member is you get to come down here and do this kind of thing for free. I mean, if you wanted to come and bring your bike and do this and run, you know, run up and down the, the runway as often as you wanted, I think it's about £120 you normally pay for that kind of you know, thing. And, but if you're a bike social member, it's free, absolutely free. So if you uh, aren't yet a bike social member and you want to look at all of the different options for rewards and competitions and discounts and experiences like this, then uh, bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join is the website site so until next time thanks so much for joining us hope you've enjoyed the show and uh, we'll see you next time That make the outtakes. <laughs> it's funny because I told my dad that there's a bloke called Eddie Hall coming and, and he knows a bloke called Eddie Hall who sells furniture in the local town. <laughs> that's less that's less funny. That's less funny. We've got a camera, it was forty seven thousand pounds, it needs twelve double A's. <laughs> Can you do that again? <laughs>